Professor Allen, you know, you said that Australia sought out from the very get-go a zero COVID policy, which to me seems completely ridiculous and unrealistic. But whatever, that was the policy they seemed to see seek out. New Zealand sought out a similar policy, but they've now said, you know what, we've had enough, no more lockdowns, we're opening things up. Could we have the same hope for Australia? Okay, so to two brief things. I, I'm living in, my wife and I have lived here for 16 years, but uh, I lived in 11 years in New Zealand before that. Uh, so firstly, no one started out on zero COVID. It sort of, it, it morphed into that after they right. started with bending the curve. So New Zealand recently, if anyone has been worse than Australia, it's New Zealand. They Auckland's had a lockdown now for two cases or something for ages. It jumped up to 32. And their prime minister, Jacinda Ardern, about a week and a half ago said, you know, zero COVID is not going to work. We have to open up. And then about three days later, she imposed an indefinite lockdown on Auckland. So, oh, you know... Right. Aust New Zealand is worthless. Uh, they they are just crazy. As they they and Victoria are the world's uh, most uh, diluted sort of jurisdictions. The the virus is endemic, and so what a lockdown does is it keeps it out, but at the cost of no employment. And then as soon as you open up the lockdown, cases go back up. Um, you know, I my wife and I are double vaccinated, partly because we're coming back to Canada to see the kids who are in London and see my mom. But what the vaccine does is it stops you from dying. There's plenty of evidence coming out of Israel and Britain now that vaccinated people transmit the disease almost as much as unvaccinated. Yes, I've seen those studies. Yes. And so when people say, oh, I, you know, so I don't personally care if I'm in the presence of an unvaccinated. People who think unvaccinated people are a problem haven't been reading the data. If you're vaccinated, you're fine. So all these vaccine mandates are crazy in my view. All they do is make you feel good about yourself. Okay, but, but they're, fact, they're, sorry, go ahead. So I'm, I'm sort of with uh, the people who say, look, it's up to you whether you want to get vaccinated. If you're over 60, you'd be crazy not to get vaccinated. If you're under 60, eh, the, the odds of dying from the disease are, are tiny, tiny. Okay, but in Australia, like, again, I, some of the most, um, and they're, you know, anti-lockdown or freedom protests, whatever you like to call them, happening in all jurisdictions. But some of the most uh, vocal uh, protests against the government lockdowns uh, has, uh, that I've seen has been from Australia, the footage that I've seen from Australia. Well, yeah, but Tanya, um, imagine you've been locked in your house for 300 days and can't go out, and these people are angry. And I, I would say the opposite. I would say most Australians have been incredibly compliant. Well, that's, and, this is what I was after. So, you know, I've known, I mean, we all have this image of Australians as these like freedom fighters and these these uh, very patriotic, uh, you know, brave, brave citizens. I was surprised that they there was such compliance with such extreme measures in, in cities like Melbourne, in that state. And, and what has taken Australians maybe so long or were they really, is there really that much fear of the virus? Well, I think there's two things. Firstly, the most of the press, and I, I don't want to, be too disparaging here, but most of the press has sort of acted like a part of a fear porn uh, outfit. You know, when, when they do surveys asking people what they think their chances of dying are if they get it, you know, there's a there's a big chunk of people who pick 30%. In fact, it's about 0 0.3, and that's just lumping everyone together. If you're under 50, it's it's negligible. And so the, you know, we were in Britain last Christmas and the, the daily onslaught. So in Australia, every day, the premier is fronting the press telling you how many cases there were. Right. Cases. This is ridiculous. And so uh, in that sense, uh, I think people have been scared witless. Uh, people aren't very good with uh, risk analysis. And they, I think, um, well, the other problem you might mention is the one that the famous Australian writer, Clive James, he ended up spending most of his life in London. He said, Australians think they're descended from convicts, but they're actually descended from prison warders. Mm. And uh, that sort of is the view. Like, people are so compliant here. I'm not a Texan sort of Floridian. I'm, I'm a Canadian, but I would be out protesting if I were in Victoria. If you're locking me up for 250 days for a disease that only kills people statistically in their 80s, like by all means, let's treat people in old age homes. Let's be really careful. But you, young people are having their lives completely ruined. And that's what I've noticed at the protests. A lot of the people protesting, they're young. They're young people. We only have um, 
uh, 20 seconds, so uh, we, yeah, we will pick this up great. after the break. But, you know, the, the age, the, the demographic looks very young, very active, a lot of immigrants, a lot of people are upset. And again, you, as, like, as you said, you've been locked up for 250 plus days. Why wouldn't you be upset?